Hello everyone, my name is Ash from the Vase Days and, and we're going to be talking about the balance patches that hit Power Rangers Legacy Wars a few days ago. Mainly the fact that it's been six months since the, the previous one we ever had. And now we have finally had a patch. A small one, but it might be good. It's directed right at the super meter. Mainly the fact that those things change the outcome of the fight by a ton. Only a few of them are not affected, but those ones are a bit different. So, before we get into this, hit that subscribe button and like the video if you did enjoy it. So, let's, let's begin. The balance changes for June 2019. This patch is meant to address the balance of particular leaders in Power Rangers Legacy Wars. We've been closely monitoring how you all play Legacy Wars and feel that these changes will improve the balance of the game on top of helping to keep things fresh. Unlike the last balance patch, which saw sweeping changes to all health and damage, this time we're operating under the same framework to provide towards nerfs and buffs to characters that, uh, that we've identified to be strong or too weak. Specifically, we also reduce the impact that super modes have on the outcome of a match in numerous instances. This is a combination of requiring more meter to build a super and gaining less meter when the leader takes damage. While most of the changes to how super meter is built are a systematic change, we'll be pu putting it in each character section for easy reference. We'll be first doing the actual characters, not the street fighters yet. Gia is an older character that hasn't quite kept up with mo how most characters operate. We're making a few changes to her kit to make it flow better. We've allowed her to dash cancel the second hit of her regular strike can combo and reduce the startup of skeet shot by quite a bit. This allows the player to bait out a disruptor or block and punish it. The other changes should also help her keep up with, the with strong characters. Gia can now dash uh, cancel after the second of the stun gun trio in addition to after uh, the first hit. On your left, you should see that you can cancel it, but the window which you can cancel it is quite small, so having it that small doesn't really allow you to bait out a block. If they wait for the last hit, they can. This it's quite slow, so they can easily block it. Sword Stinger EP costs three to two. Well, it was easily punished. If you if your opponent has a block, you could actually easily blo uh, stop it from attacking and then punish them. Started off key skeet shot reduced significantly. That's way faster. If your opponent goes into a block, it should be quick. If you see it, just do it. High chance it'll actually hit. And the first hit of Saber Whip now causes a sweep hit reaction, allowing it to reliably combo. That's the one big change that might actually hurt most people. Being that uh, you can cancel it before it even hits. Making that people won't realize that they just get cancelled and Skeet Shot hits you right in the face. Then pretty much you just got punished. That's kind of where it comes from, but with how long it takes for the thing to reach, it actually has to... You can see the saber stretch out and then hit. You can actually block just before it hits you if you react on time. Goldar is getting a similar adjustment to Gia. These changes target Goldar's ability to bait out blocks and his primary 3 hit strike usable rather than it being a liability in combat. Goldar Dropkick also has less startup to make it a bit less likely an opponent can react to it. The second hit of Goldar Slash now causes a sweep a hit reaction to prevent it from it being easily blocked. It, that means it's it's kind of like uh, Dracon and Zenaku now. It allows him to uh, cause... Okay, you just have to block. If you block, you get stumped. If you don't block, you get sweeped. Or if you're lucky, he cancels the hit to knowing that you'll block and doesn't do anything. But then you don't do anything, allowing pretty much it's useless. But it's not uh, not really useless, but it's good for combos now. You can actually combo after drop kick and a Goldar stump now. Goldar drop kick has less startup. I tested it in the game, and uh, you can see on the left. Yeah, that's it. It to me, it doesn't seem that much faster, but it it will allow you to at least combo after the mighty punch, drop kick, and then Goldar slash. An easy combo that you can land. 
quite good. It's a 100% hit, as long as you activate the punch into the kick, and then just go into the strike. Make sure you actually do that, or you won't hit. How do you get some changes in the EP cost in order to make their kit be flow better? In addition, there are a few hit reaction changes to make Boulder Barrage more usable rather than being a, d a detriment. Seismic Quake, also known as his breaker, has been... E its EP cost is now 3. It was 4. Debris Toss. Yeah, that was three. It, it stuns, and it's kind of fast, but not that fast that you can't react to it. But now that it costs two, it can actually combo into a lot more things. Boulder Barrage. EP costs from four to five. Now, it's not all bad. It's pretty much, it's still the same cost. The middle slot is still the same cost. From three to two, and four to five. Making that it's still 7. Boulder Barrage hits now will stun until the final stagger hit to prevent blocking during it. Now that's one of the few things that people might not realize, but Putty, he can combo after a block into any of his hits. The turtles will love him. If they block your attacks, you will be stunned, stunned, or smashed, or hit into the air. And the combo can go on for quite a while. Boulder Barrage and Boulder Barrage combo. That's gonna be a deadly one, because you can't stop it, and neither can you actually... Yeah, all you can do is wait, because you'll be stunned constantly, staggered, stunned, and then staggered once again. Mesogog. This is a simple change to make his counter function rather than a being a liability. Meso Flash now causes a stun, then sweep hit reaction instead of interrupt, preventing opponents from being able to block after being hit. Well, that's that's quite good. You can actually combo into his other attacks now, and there isn't really much to it, but it's still... You still have to be in melee range. It doesn't work if you're too far away from the opponent. Trini Quan. This is a small change, but should help Trini be more effective mid-screen against strikes. Claw Counter will now stun opponents instead of knocking them away. Instead of them being knocked away, they get stunned. If they're not in the corner, now you can actually go into the Flying Dagger into the Spinning Blades. And you could already do it, but only in the corner. While it was in yours, you couldn't exactly uh, hit them because you they would be recovered by the time you try and hit them with a Flying Dagger. Those are the characters that actually... they were changed quite a bit. Making them kind of better. They got quite a few buffs and they were already weak, but now they're at least a bit stronger. But let's move on to the super mode uh, changes. Akuma's changes are more uh, or less systemic uh, to keep him in line with the rest of the Street Fighter cast. When getting hit, his meter gain has been reduced by 66%, and Akuma will now have to build 25% more meter than before to earn a super mode. This goes on for Kami, Chun Li, Ryu, Tommy Oliver. Jason Lee Scott with Dragon Shield and Zack Taylor with Dragon Shield. They all get the same change in Super Meter. Making sure they don't get their... They pretty much don't get their Super Attack, but with Tommy Oliver. He's Dino Thunder Black uh, variation. Yeah, he's ones... It's kind of... Um, he won't be able to exactly use his Super Mode that much, but... It still lasts a full 10 seconds to allow you to you do anything you want with the Super Attacks. But it's going to be harder to get to that form now. Now for the characters that have had the super meter changed, but also quite a nerf. Guile, the one everyone hates. Guile changes are targeted adjustments to make him more likely to run out of EP when making a bad decision in combat. His normal abilities see a damage increase to compensate for this, but the EX versions uh, re retain the same amount of damage output. In addition, he sees the same systemic changes to super meter building as the rest of our cast. When getting hit, his meter gain has been reduced by 66%. Gao will now have to build 25% more meter than before to earn a super move. Sonic Boom, 3 EP to 4. Increased damage by 44%. The good thing is, now it's it's fast, but at least it, it costs more. So, if he uses it and gets Sonic Boom again, he can't combo into another attack because it costs too much EP. EX Sonic Boom, now costs 4 instead of 3 EP, which is good. It stays the same than what his normal one costs. Somersault Kick. 5 EP instead of 4. Damage increased by 54% and dashing branch frames pushed back to make him slightly more vulnerable on a whip. This being that when... If he hits you and you use a breaker, now he's more likely to be unable to counter you by the time he gets out of it. 
This kind of house, being that if your breaker is too slow to hit him in time, or you activate it just a bit too late. EX Somersault Kick. Now 5, instead of 4. The damage is unchanged, and the dashing branch frames pushed back to make him slightly more vulnerable on a, on a whiff. Eh, yeah, same as the other one, but at least if he hit, if he hits you with his, uh, his somersault kick and you use the breaker, at least he won't be able to, yeah, at least he won't be able to escape. Rearranger. Rearranger's uh, Tatsumaki ability sees a damage reduction to account for the fact that the player cannot block after its first hit. Well, they, they can kind of, but you'll have to be in the middle of a breaker. That's the only way you'll be able to actually block the, fr uh, the second hit. You can still block it if you know it's coming, but if you use a breaker, you can use the freeze frames to help you block the attack. EX Tatsumaki's damage is based on the non-EX version and sees a reduction as well. In addition, he sees the same systemic changes to super meter building as the rest of our cast. Yeah, I'm not gonna say what his, uh, the super meter changes are, but his Tatsumaki, uh, yeah, Senpo, I cannot say that name, damage is decreased by 20%. Then the EX version, damage decreased by 31. I think that's, um, they're supposed to say 31%. M. Bison. Bison's EX moves have been adjusted in damage to make deciding which one to use less obvious. EX knee press was overwhelmingly powerful and fast, so its damage has been reduced. EX Psycho Inferno has a lot of startup, so its damage has been slightly increased. In addition, M. Bison sees the same systemic changes to super meter gain as the rest of the cast. Not saying what his super move changes are, but EX Knee Press damage reduced by 33% and uh, EX Psycho Inferno damage increased by 10%. And that's all the Street Fighter changes. At least they were all changed. Blake's changes uh, target his super mo mode, specifically his ability to build meter and how powerful he is during it. His regular abilities are entirely unchanged. When getting hit, his meter gain has been reduced by 80%. Instead of 66%, he gets a massive change to his super meter, making it a lot harder for him to get, uh, get meter. And he's still going to need to get 25 more meter than before to uh, earn thunder mode. When in thunder mode, the EP cost of his abilities will now match the regular versions of these, uh, those abilities, rather than being 1 EP cheaper. They retain any damage speed or hit reaction improvements. The good thing is, now they at least, at least it's 4 EP for both of his breakers and 3 EP for both of his strikes now. Unlike 2 for his strikes and 3 for his breaker. Fixed a bug where if he uses a thunder mode ability right before it runs out, he would gain some meter. Well, it seems he, now his thunder abilities don't even, they don't even give him any meter. While, as soon as it ran out, it was about to end and you activated it. Now you don't get any meter. Lauren Shiba, the Samurai Raid Ranger. Lauren Shiba's changes are pretty small, but should make a big impact. A Fire Sword Charge now costs more EP, reducing the ability of a player to repeatedly juggle an opponent. In addition, Kanji Blast sees a damage reduction to account for its d damage over time effect. Kanji Blast re damage reduced by 10%, and Fire Sword Charge EP cost 3 EP to 4. Now you can't just cycle. You might actually have to try and save your EP. Uh, finally, Zenaku. Zenaku's changes are targeting his meter gain. Zenaku's ability to gain meter remains focused on taking damage, since his meter gain when hitting opponents is very low, as is. Fix the bug where if you use full moon ability right before it runs out, you would gain some uh, meter. So by that, you haven't been able to land an attack, but as soon as the meter was about to run out and you activated something, it seems you would get some meter from that specific ability allowing you to at least get some of it, but it wouldn't really affect much since he needs to take damage to build a lot of meter. And same thing, he needs to build 25% more meter than before to earn full moon mode. Eee, that's kind of small, these updates, but the only thing I see as a problem is Putty. He might, he might be the new meta. I don't see Gia getting much love because of the fact that her primaries are not exactly good when it comes to attacking after a block. She wouldn't be able to combo right into another attack if there's a block in her second slot after she just blocked. Goldar, he might, he is better, but he's not really that great yet. He does have a 50-50 strike, but that's, that's only 50% of a chance for it to, you to actually know he's gonna attack you. But then there's Putty, the person who's going to become a turtle to uh, who's going. Everyone's going to love Putty. You get just 
Whoever has the playstyle to be a turtle, just switch the putty and you'll hit everything easily. Block, and then you can go into any of your attacks. Any of them. You choose. Just, just pick. You'll be safe, 100%. Unless you use his primary strike. Unless you know they're not going to be able to block it on the third hit. Mainly because it doesn't exactly say... It doesn't exactly remove your... It's kind of a bit too slow. The fight uh, between hit three and four, people, some characters can actually block the attack, making it that it's not exactly, it's not exactly the go-to attack you want to do. Go with one of the middle slots, debris toss the boulder, bar boulder barrage. You'll be better, literally. They do. They can cycle between each other and constantly stun the opponent. Unless you have a block in that slot, just go with just go with the primary strike, cancel it, and then go into seismic quake, and then go into the primary strike and let it continue. If the opponent is high enough, they won't be able to land and block the fourth hit. That's it for today's video. We we went over the amount of we went over the balance changes. I think it's 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 good. It's... yeah. With all these changes, at least some people will take punishment if they bolt into one character. And the few that actually weren't using these characters didn't get any improvement, but they might switch. Or they might actually just stay the same and keep going against others. That might destroy or they might be easier to, uh, to win against. But that's all. If you did enjoy, please hit the like button, comment if you want to see something specific, and subscribe and hit that notification bell not to miss anything. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!